this is Dan Dallo. I'm here with Stephen Borg. Today we'll talk about Cortana Analytics Suite. You know, Steve, these days we are inundated with data. Something like 85% of the data organizations gather comes in just automatically. Just pulled from like clickstream analysis and all the sensors, yeah. Yep. yeah. What do we do with all of that data? And I think it's a legitimate question. Yeah, well, traditionally it's been a manual approach, right? We would ask what happened, what did we do, what past sort of stuff, and then there would be a lot of manual process around it, right? We would talk about it. We would say, what happened? What does everybody think and feel about it? Absolutely. And we get that decision. I think that that's the key thing. You know, the value goes off to the right on this slide. The data, those reports, and we still see those. Those are the executive dashboards. Sure. We use Microsoft CRM here, and we see those types of dashboards. And there's a lot of manual in it as well. That's right. Some of it's automated, which makes it a little easier. And we might be able to drill in yeah. and see why did it happen. Like if sales go up 15%, we can drill into that month and say, what happened? What did we do? Oh, it was, it was a one-off. Sure, sure. Again, there's a lot of manual sort of labor involved there, and that takes time. It does. You get the data input, etc. cetera. Um, what is interesting is we're able to answer a little deeper question with the why did it happen. Sure. But there's more questions that we could answer, and, and that's what will happen. Yeah, that's where we want to get to, right? We want to know from what happened what will happen, and in that the manual decision making uh, kind of diminishes a little bit with our new tools. Yeah, if we can take a look at something and, and, and predict the future even a little bit, that helps dramatically for, for improving our success ratio. It does, and it gets us to what should I do, right? Exactly. And that might be the best overall, right? <laughs> right. When we're starting to look at, at not just decision support, but potentially decision automation. That's right. And it lends itself to quick action. So there's decisions and then the actions we should take. And that's where we want to get to, right? Yep. And that understanding of, of how do we do we automate some of those decisions. I think I think it's absolutely fascinating. It I, I think I should bring it up. I was reading on Katie Nuggets the other day, it's a blog site, and maybe I'll show it when we get to the sure. demo. But there is a uh, a guy who took um, machine learning and took his Tinder account and looked at his right swipes and his left swipes and he ran them through a, an algorithm called eigenfaces. It basically determines similarities in faces. Sure. And he found out who he liked, who he did not like. He right swipe and left swipe. The commonalities. The commonalities, sure. exactly. Plugged it into an algorithm and he automated his Tinder account. So that as he's wandering around and nearby, he's swiping yeah. right, swiping left, um, automated decision making, right? He's allowing his algorithm to determine who he should see next, right? Or who he should meet with. Wow. So, uh, as I understand, he also was able to automate the first few texts. Is that right? <laughs> yes. He has an Eliza like program so that the first text he sends out, if he gets a response, that increases the percentage chance that there'll be a connection there. And then automates another. He automates the first three communications with the person. <laughs> wow, he's, he's dating at the speed of business. <laughs> yes, dating at the speed of business. I, I think that's just absolutely, that's a classic case of, of automated decision making. right? That, and and you, not always appropriate. I thought that was, uh, I just, that's just it's the bounds of, the, it's novel. Yes. It's a novel it's use of, of Proton Analytics. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of stuff provided. Exactly. Sure. Uh, so when we're talking about sort of accelerating to the speed of business, what we're talking about is moving from that reactive to proactive, right? So I think that's a good sort of indication there. Instead of reactively choosing the people, he's proactively using this algorithm to go, to go, out, out, to go out and seek. Right? Yeah, sure. Exactly. And that, that speed of business, that reactive to proactive, is one of the things that can provide a competitive. Absolutely. It, whether in dating or whether in business. Now, one of the things we've always looked at is historical data. And interestingly, 
historical data still has a lot of value. Sure. We want to look at what happened and explain why it happened. But traditionally, our, our lag time to get those data to reports mm -hmm. has been a week, a month, right. a quarter, a year that we get the historical data. Um, we still have the value of that historical data, but now we're getting it updated in seconds or milliseconds as right. opposed to months or years. Absolutely. And even, oh, go ahead. And that allows us to sort of pull out more value now with Proton Analytics to make predictions, to not only look at what happened, but what will happen. What should I do with this data? Yes. And when you're running at that really fast second-by-second -second cadence, you might be able to make a prediction as to what you should do next minute. Sure. Not just next quarter. And, and that's a very interesting thing to exploit some opportunities that might exist in the market. Absolutely, and, and sort of Cortana Analytics allows you to automate some of that. So as you get that data coming in, you can automate decision making, something you couldn't do with the manual process we had before. Very correct, very true. And looking at this, people and processes, and then to this decision automation, and, and again, both sides are important here. Yeah. It's just we've always had the ability to look at people and processes. We haven't in the, in the about decision automation. We haven't been able to do that. Yeah. And you don't have to always be right. I, I look at some of these things and I hear you know, people say, yeah, but you're only 70% correct. Wow! If I could be 70% correct on every stock pick, yeah. I would be wealthier than Bill Gates in no time at all. <laughs> right? I mean, it doesn't take a lot to get a competitive advantage. Absolutely. And with the speed this provides, you're already halfway there. Absolutely. So the Cortana Analytics Suite, what is it? I mean, you run our Cortana Analytics group here. What What is it? Sure. It's a managed end-to-end -end pipeline for your data. It goes from sort of ingesting it, wherever it comes from, to outputting it in a way that you can interact with naturally. Um, it interfaces directly with Cortana, so you can have a digital assistant. Uh, it allows for dashboard reports, um, or you could pump it out to some other automated system. Love it. I, it. That makes a lot of sense to me. I want to be able to make some decisions and take action, and it's kind of handles not just that prediction thing, but you're telling me it handles the data side of the house too, and processing the data. Sure, end to end, what you're doing is you're leveraging years of Microsoft's research, right? They use this in Bing, in Xbox, in Skype, and you're now getting their tools to sort of grab the data, manipulate it, store it, uh, process it in whatever way your business needs, and then output it in a way that sort of makes sense for you. Let's take a look at some of the various pieces that, that I think that, that I found were interesting when you and I were talking sure. earlier. Um, I the pre-configured solution. Now, it, these are things that Microsoft has built that are just templates. And I think it'll be worth showing. I'll show one that's already set up and used where we can upload images, just random photographs, and it'll pull out faces. It'll tell us ages of those people. It'll identify whether it's, if it's a photo of food, if it's indoors or outdoors, all of those things already built. But other ones are things that are very difficult, like textual analytics, sure. pulling meaning out of text. Uh, Microsoft has an Azure ML, which is a subset of Cortana Analytics, a piece that you can actually go in, configure with your own data, and process your own text to come out with kind of whatever you want in those textual analytics things. Sure, like sentiment analysis. That's a perfect example. Sentiment analysis is great. And I thought about taking it and we plug it into TFS, we process all of the bugs, and we can classify what the bugs are based on the bug input report. Oh, sure. I pull out the, the key phrases. Right. And identify this bug is similar to this bug. Those types of things. Similarity indexes between bugs. Um, the world's your oyster. And they did the hard work. That's right. Uh, the Azure machine learning and capabilities in Hadoop, Stream Analytics, really allow you to do almost 
anything you could kind of imagine here. It's some, it's some amazing stuff. So I, one of the things about Cortana Analytics um, is it's made up of all these little parts. And I really wish we could demonstrate the Cortana integration, right? The mm. Cortana, tell me the 20 people I've swiped right to, or whatever. You know, that right. quest, that, that interaction, um, that part isn't out yet. And we probably ought to stress that the Cortana Analytics suite itself is an announcement of Microsoft's intention to group together a bunch of features and then release it. What features? Well. First, we're going to start with the ability to ingest your data. And in that, you can sort of see how it's being ingested through the data factory. It's a visual pipeline. And it shows you if it's going through blob storage, and then the next piece through um, Hadoop, uh, through stream analytics, and all the way to your output to Power BI. Uh, these are the sort of common stages that you use with Cortana Analytics. Well, what's an event hub? Because if I'm looking here at the left, I've got ways to ingest data at Data Factory and grab data from SQL Server or whatnot. Tell me about the event hub. Sure. The event hub will grab sort of information, pull them in, and you'll just have just a massive amount of um, data sitting in this hub that you can then pull from or redirect. I, I was listening to a podcast, and they said they reached a trillion. That's trillion with a T, event hub messages last June. Wow. That is a lot of messages. That's a lot of messages. Coming through in one month, a trillion in a month. It, big numbers. <laughs> big numbers is what they're ingesting. Um, from, from the event hub or that, that information management side, we go into these big data stores, and we have a couple, something that seems very clear to me, Azure SQL Data Warehouse, that sounds like a traditional data warehouse, but in Azure Data Lake. Right? The, the data lake allows you to put any kind of file in there. Uh, just anything. Just throw it on in there. You don't need to sort of classify it. It doesn't need to adhere to some schema. Uh, it's just purely whatever. So in other words, rather than, if I'm interpreting this right, sure. rather than go through this long, drawn-out process of building uh, transforms, to transform my data into data warehouses, transform all the data I want to look at, we're going to take piles of raw data, potentially, yes. that I don't yet know what I want to do with, and dump them in the lake. Throw them in there. Yeah. We're, we're talking about speed, big data. This is stuff that you don't want to parse through until you have to. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> I, the next step, I, I, I love, I love, I, I, there's a demo on, that we're going to give here, and it, it talks about things like stream analytics, machine learning, Hadoop. Um, I, Oh, that's the crux of this, okay. right? The, Tell me more. The Azure Machine Learning, uh, again, this is something they use in their products at Microsoft, and it's now just available to you in a workspace that's UI-driven. So you can sort of just grab these modules, connect them together, and get an output uh, that you could then publish to the web and use as an API or grab directly from blob storage. There are a lot of sort of things already built in, so you don't have to be a mathematician. And if you have on-site scripts, you can even upload those, change between R or Python, and integrate those together without having a lot of background in data science. That's one of the really impressive things, I think, about, I about, about Cortana Analytics. Uh, the other stream analytics, I want to jump into that. Sure. It, it's not as powerful as something like Azure ML for pulling out ideas or sentiment or things like that, but it's fast. It is fast. You can connect it straight to an event hub, and, and in fact, we'll demo this. Sure. Right? We'll build out an event hub, build out a stream analytics sitting on top of it, and we'll jam some data through. We're going to do Twitter data. I know some of the attendees have actually seen this demo before, but we're going to take that and pull together an Azure Event Hub and drop it with Stream Analytics. And we can be processing with Stream Analytics millions of rows per second. It's insane. Wow. It, so that must take uh, a while. Do, do we have enough time to do that demo? We actually do. We're going to crank that thing out in just a few minutes. And it, what, what is interesting, you mentioned take a while. 
I interpreted it first as the stream analytics are going to take a long time to process the data from the event hub. And we actually are getting sub millisecond response times from when something hits an event hub till the time stream analytics processes it and reports it on. That is very nearly real time. That's, that's really close to real time. <laughs> that definitely is. So when we get it through that in the demo, I'm going to sure. go one more to the right, and we're going to pump that into Power BI up here in the upper right and oh, into perfect. the dashboard. So not doing anything fancy with it, but just pump it into Power BI. We'll take a look. And I think most use cases, that's what would happen. It would be sort of published to some dashboard. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. We don't get to demo the personal digital assistant yet, the Cortana piece. That's, that's what's coming. I'm excited. I mean, we could probably figure out some hacky way to build it, but they're <laughs> releasing like integrated APIs, so we will wait for those. Uh, the perceptual intelligence will also be interesting. It sort of allows you to understand the facial features or inflection and voice of the people that you're talking to. So stakeholders, it, it may allow you to make the correct decision with customers or stakeholders on how they feel at that moment. That could make the difference between a sale and a non sale, right? I mean, that's exactly. True. Or we could have ran all of the attendees through some kind of perceptual thing, gone out to Twitter, gotten their, figured out if they're a millennial, figured out where they sit. Who sure. Knows? But for the attendees here, we did not do that to you. We didn't go deep diving into your history and, and, and pull out all sorts of details on you. But we could. Yeah. It, that, we could big brother this whole thing, too, right? There's some power here. Um, and with power, with great power comes great responsibility, or whatever right. the Spider-Man thing is. Um, the next, the last thing is, I think the most important. It's these business scenarios, some specific business scenarios that we want to drive business change with this. Sure. Um, I, I think it's fun for uh, you know the folks at KD Nuggets to build a build a tool that swipes left, swipes right on Tinder. I think that grabs people's attention because it's. It's novel. It's fun. novel and yeah. fun, right? But um, the money, the right. drive, the future um, of at least working in this industry comes from those business scenarios. Absolutely. Being able to forecast a decision, what's going to happen, make recommendations based on your customers, not just the average. Yeah. Uh, customer churn. That's, a, that's another scenario where you really want to know in advance what's going to happen with your business. Yeah. Are people going to spend the classic as telecoms, right, because they pioneered it? Oh, sure. Are they going to leave? Um, if you know, people who bought this also bought that, right? right? Those types of business scenarios which are, we take for granted um, are still, uh, or have been until very recently, uh, the domain of large businesses. Right. And I think that's moving much closer. Well, again, now you have the tools of a large business, Microsoft, made available for a monthly subscription. A absolutely. I, that, the the uh, Let's look at your catalog, see what people have bought, and make recommendations. Yeah. That's one of those templates in Azure ML. <laughs> I haven't used it yet, but it seems like a wonderful tool to just drop stuff. Already through. built out. Yeah. Already built. Um, you can see it in action if you go to Channel 9. Uh, That's right. Microsoft.com. And people who watch this video also watch this one. That's right. It's powered by Azure ML. At the <laughs> let's let's take this now. Probably worth me taking control here and 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 building out a demo. So I'm going to move over here a little bit, and we're going to go build out a demo. And to start with, I want to show very briefly um, my data source. Now we're not going to talk too much about data sources. But I'm going to be going into Twitter and grabbing data from Twitter. I have a Twitter stream that's hidden below all my okay. private credentials, sure. right? But we're going to look for anything with the word Windows, Mac, Linux, Unix, and uh, I don't know, IoT, the Internet of Things. Internet of things. We might do uh, big data. I, we can do anything. Any of it. Yeah. We can start slicing and dicing some of these things. And what we're going to do is take data from Twitter. Anybody around the world tweeting these, we're going to feed them into this app. Now, this app is going to use a little bit of um, machine learning as well to do sentiment analysis on the tweets. So it's going to come back and say, it, it, does the person think this is great? It's, you know, they're, they're, uh -huh. they're positive on it. That would be a four it will return. Four. If they're neutral, it will return a two. And if they're negative, it will return a zero. 
we're going to get those basic okay ratings. So, so we're just grabbing a bunch of tweets and then we're parsing through them and rating them based on how people feel when they're writing it. Exactly. And then we're going to take them all, we're going to throw them in an event hub. So before we can start this, let's go build out that event hub, stream analytics, and off to um, Power BI. Power BI. Let's do it. So let's do it. So let's start by going back over here. I mean, you can see I've, I've got some results here on Twitter. Um, you know, this, these are an IoT search, and we can see lots of IoTs, and we can determine you know, big data was dethroned by IoT. What are tech's biggest hype terms? I don't know if that's going to be positive or negative or neutral. Right. But sure. Yeah. I, might it be positive or might be neutral or negative, rather. We'll so there's a lot of these tweets that we're going to be, be snagging as, as a subset. We're going to be getting a lot more. Now, um, I promised before I started that I'd show two things. Okay. Uh, that, that was, um, here is the uh, Tinder box. It's automating ro romance with Tinder and eigenfaces. So you can <laughs> check that out at Katie Nuggets. Um, and then the other one I wanted to show off was uh, Project Oxford. This is the one you mentioned. It's right out of the box and allows us to simply upload any photo and it'll give us a bunch of details. First, it looks like this person is 29 and male. And it gives us some ideas. It's what's the image format? Is it clip art? Is it black and white? Is it adult content? Might be useful for filtering out if you're building something for you know, parental blocking. Parental blocking. Um, it, there's also a separate one, maybe slightly related, which is racy content. Oh, you yeah. Know, is, it, is it something that might be uh, disapproved of in G or PG? Exactly. Sure. G or PG. And then we can see the dominant color, the dominant foreground, and the accent colors, which are important if we want to take these and build out some kind of like pleasant mm, for collection of photos. For sure. pictures. So all of these things are available. And, and, and there's a categories. It's people swimming. And it's of 98% confidence. So it's wow. person swimming. Um, and we can see several other ones. Um, this one's going to drive up our RACI score just a little bit. But keep our adult score very low. This is something sure. you might see on a catalog for a, a, a Hawaiian vacation. Sure. Yeah. sure. Um, and, and you can upload these. And this one comes back, yes. It, it is a line drawing, right? <laughs> and it's it's clip art. And there's really, I think, interesting things you can do with the out of the box. This is simply an API you call. That is very cool. They did the hard work. Now let's get back to let's get back to what we're working with, and we're working with Microsoft Azure. And the first thing we need to create is an event hub. So I'm going to go scroll down here to um, Service Bus. And we're going to create a new service bus. Okay. Yeah. I think this is this is one of those things that's um, kind of important. An event hub really is a publish subscribe type model or a, 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 a queue. It just drops things into a queue and we can read it multiple times. Yep. So it's just a highfalutin queue that can take millions and millions of messages a second. Sure. With with multiple outputs, right? With multiple outputs. As many outputs as you want. Yeah. So it's Great for funneling your data wherever you sort of need it to go. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to call it Stand Stream in, in honor of you, Stan. <laughs> Thank we'll you. take this. We'll do a Stand Stream, and we're going to drop this in West US. West US is close to us. Sure. I have a bias to West US. <laughs> I wish I could set this as a default, but we'll go West US. And there's some inf information here about the types of namespaces we're adding. We want a messaging namespace. Now we're not going to go into excruciating detail. Sure. Um, right now, we're simply creating stand screen. Um, it won't take us long. It's just spinning up like that. It is. So it's going out in Azure, and it is spinning up a brand new stream for you in the bathtub. Wow. Looks right like it's already finished. So let's dismiss those. I think we're good. And stand stream, if I drill into that, now we have the option to create an event hub. We can also create queues, topics, relays. We can scale this whole thing up and down. We can also scale event hubs independently. So wow. Yeah. Uh, we won't dive into that too much. I think it's it'll be key. We will be in later sure. podcasts we're doing, but we're going to leave it here for now. Uh, let's create an event hub. And the event hub, we'll do the custom create so we can talk a little bit more. Sure. Um, and we'll call this the, the stand hub, for lack of Stand hub. Lack of creativity. <laughs> stand. There we go. Perfect. It's the stand hub, and we just need a name and it put a little green check mark that said it was unique. Now, if a partition count, I'm going to put one partition here, and it's going to give me a warning 
that says the value must be between 2 and 32. So these, this partition is the number of partitions I can have in my default subscription. Um, and basically, you have to have a minimum of two. And each partition can take up to a thousand messages a second. Wow. So just straight off your get-go, you can get uh, 32,000 messages per second. We have to scale it later with something called a throughput unit. I don't want to discuss too much the details. Sure. But for what we're doing, just two partitions is probably the fastest. Absolutely. It'll come out really quickly. Next is message retention. I'm going to go with one day. Anywhere between one and seven days. Okay, so I could have it there for a week. You could. So often, if you have a bunch of data you're gathering, you'll set this to seven, start your event hub, start gathering data, and then build out your back-end infrastructure oh, over sure. the next week. And then you'll have all that data already you captured. All that data captured, exactly. We only need one day because this is a quick demo. So um, we, our event hub is being created right now. I need to wait just a moment. Great. These things uh, really spin up very quickly, right? It, they do. Um, it, I think it's pretty impressive how quickly these things appear. Um, we're in here. We can take a look at some of the interesting things that are happening, uh, but we need to configure it. There's a couple configuration things we okay. need to do. And the first one is the shared access policies. And I'm going to create one called STAN, for lack of a better term. Okay. And, and in this one, I'm going to do manage. Now, normally I would do... Um, just send. I do like a, a stand send okay. and a stand listen because this is the permission that I'm granting to send messages to my event hub. Mm -hmm. um, I also will later on want to listen from the event hub. Sure. So I might should have maybe create two. I'm going to create one. Maybe do both. Right. Just for simplicity in the demo. So, but it allows you to either let uh, someone listen or just send. Correct. And the role. And you might have several different send profiles. Sure. With different access keys. So if, if you needed to partition your senders, you could partition them across different shared access policies. So if something got disturbed, hacked, whatever, you could switch it out. You know, oh, just do perfect. one subset. Anyway, we got this, this one thing. We're going to enable it. Let me save that. And now that we're done with that, we have two pieces of information that we need to use the API to send data to the event hub. Now, you can send it with just a standard HTTP post okay. or HTTP GET. So it's not difficult. We could use REST. Mm -hmm. um, or if we don't want to do some of that work, we can use simply the, the, the APIs. And there's APIs for JavaScript, for Java, for .NET, for Ruby, for Python, um, and several others. So, there's a yeah. Lot of, yeah. so we can use what we want. Really so, flexible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's say OK on that. And we're going to now go back to that Event Hub homepage and pull out the two pieces we needed. So we needed two things. We had the Event Hub itself. Uh -huh. I clicked the wrong button. It brought me clear out here. Let me go back to my Event Hub. And those yep. are in my, let me find, there is Service, service Bus. bus yeah. Stan Stream, Event Hubs, and pull out Stan Hub. And in the stand hub, I'm going to go and view the connection string. And here's my entire endpoint for the connection string. So, and I have multiple connection strings for each of my, sure. my access policies. I'm going to copy this, close it, and we know that this is for the stand hub. And let's go back to our application and enter in this connection string. Just paste it on, Just in, paste there. It on in there. And this is the stand hub right here. Stan hub. And we're going to, just a reminder, we're going to grab streams that have these words in them. So uh, let's, let's run it. So this is automatically going to go out to Twitter, just start grabbing tweets, parsing through them, and giving you some kind of sentiment score. Yep, exactly. And then we're going to send the sentiment off to the event hub. Now, interestingly, we don't have to. We could have sent raw data to the event hub, and in Stream Analytics, it's a preview feature now, sure. but soon you'll be able to call your Azure ML um, wow. things as part of your query. So it can you know, select sentiment score, and it'll call the sentiment score and return the data. <laughs> Not happening yet, but so you can see the data here. There's a four coming by. That one was with a Mac. 
Um, there's another four, that one's with Windows, another four with uh, Big Data. Uh, we don't see any zeros here. I'm looking for some zeros. There's a zero. That one's on a Mac. Someone's dissatisfied with their okay. Mac. Uh, you can see these things flowing through. Sure. And they're all going to the event hub. Now, when we go back to the event hub, we can look, and if we wait for five minutes, we'll see that there are some incoming messages. Entered. Oh, sure. It'll show you the graph of how busy it is. Um, exactly. Different metrics that you can set. And you can set alerts and, and stuff, too, based on... Absolutely. It, is my event hub rejecting things? Right. I, I'm only paying right now. For 1,000 messages per second, I've got the smallest possible event hub. 22 bucks a month. Smallest possible is 1,000 messages a second. And so it, that's up there. That's yeah, absolutely. Um, if, they get, if there's rejection notices, I can be alerted to those so I can come in and scale it up. Um, or maybe set up an API to scale it for me. Sure. Currently, it doesn't auto scale. Okay. That's probably coming if the rest of Azure you know, if, is, yeah. is an indication. So we're getting some data, but we need to now use that data. So I'm going to go all the way back out, and I'm going to go down to Stream Analytics. And I'm going to create a new Stream Analytics. Now, there's only Quick Create here because it's so easy. We're going to put it in West US, and we need a job name. And, and, and in, in keeping with our it will be stand yeah. stream, stand stream here. And yep, it's available, and we'll create that stream analytics job. So it's creating now. Yep. Already done. Yep. Just use that quick create. Absolutely, and it's completely useless at this point in time. <laughs> we got it does nothing, right? So let's hook it up. Let's do some good with let's it. Let's do it. So we have a couple things here, like scaling it, configuring it. The three I'm going to care about are inputs, query, and output. We're going to take some data in, process the data, and then do something with it. That makes sense. All right, let's grab an input. Add an input, and we've got two types of data. We can do reference data, um, and we can do a data stream. Now, if we really done done this demo up right, we would have built some reference data sure. that, that said a 4 is positive, a 2 is neutral, and a 0 is negative. Sure, add a little bit of context. Yes, yeah, so we could do a join. Right. We could do that with a select, with a case statement in, in SQL, but, you know. Good. Yeah, depending upon different needs, you may require that. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to just grab the data stream. And the yeah. data stream right now can come from two sources. They do say, hey, let us know if we're missing a, a source. Mm -hmm. They have a user voice and say, but we're going to grab an event hub. If this is for real-time workflows generally. Sure, um, but if you had a bunch of existing data, you could then just grab it right from block storage. Absolutely. You wouldn't have to pump it through. You could take data and run it through something like um, Data Factory and dump it in block storage. Sure. And grab it from there. I'm guessing SQL Server is going to be up here soon, <laughs> or at least SQL DB. I think you're right. So... Um, event Hub. We need we we need a we call it Stan Hub. Stan Hub. <laughs> oh wait, do we we already have a, a? Oh no, that was right. Stan Hub was our was, yeah. um, event hub that we wanted to tie from. Um, oh no no no, this is the alias for this in, and we're this is just going to be our in. We're just going to call it in. This is our in. Well, sorry. Uh, maybe Stan in. <laughs> stand in. I love it. Okay. We're going to do Stan in, and let's choose an event hub. Um, where is our event hub? Oh no. I was on the wrong dem namespace. Here we are on Stan there Stream. We are. Get in the right one. There's the Stan hub. And we're going to use Stan to send it in. Now there's some other things like a consumer group. Um, we can limit readers, etc. And, and those are advanced uses. I think that they're useful to dive into at some point. Not for this demo of Cortana Analytics as a whole. Sure, just the overall. Yeah, just the overall. So this is Stan in. Let's go next. And we need to choose a serialization format. And maybe I'm doing too much detail here, but it's got the big ones. Sure. It's got JSON, comma-separated variable, and the other big one that people aren't aware of is Avro. And that's very often we used in HD Insight. As you the, know. the Hadoop. Uh, the Hadoop. That's so, right. It's the one there. I'm going to use JSON because if we looked... At the data that was flowing, you saw it was in brackets and quotes and colons and semicolons and commas. It was already JSON. It was JSON. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. We'll keep it that way. So we're going to get that data, and it's connecting this stand-in connection right now. So now we've got some data coming in. 
looks good, but we want to build our query. Yes. Before we build our query, we're going to have to grab some sample data. Okay. So let's grab some sample data from our stream. Now our event hub has already been gathering and storing data. Yep, we saw that. Yep. So let's go back. Um, I think I don't know when we started this, but I think we started it like around 9:31 or something. Let's start at 9:32, okay. and let's grab um, three minutes worth of data. That'll get us up to now. Ooh, might we might better? Yeah, three minutes of data will be fine. So you don't want to go too early. No, before you start collecting data. Right. Yeah, you that, don't want to go before, so it crashes exactly. Right, okay. Um, and you don't want to make this too long. Like if I did 12 minutes. Then when I started to collect data, it wouldn't be pulling from historical data. It would pull data, and then I would wait. And you'd have to wait until it was done, right? So it's grabbing some of that sample data, and fingers crossed that the time on my computer is matching the time there, right? Sure. Yep, we got our sample data. Great. Here's the UI trick. Okay. And the UI trick is you need to click details and then download that sample file. Not super intuitive. Not super intuitive. I agree. Um, if you don't click, because you always ignore the details messages on yeah, the succeeding ones. Yeah. So anyway, there we are. We pulled it down, and if we if we open this up, we can we can open it up, and and it'll it'll show us here. I'm going to go to the end, and we can just see what that data looks like. Sure. Oops. Rebracket it. Rebracket it, and you can see it's got like created at a topic sentiment score, and then it's got three things that weren't in our initial push. And this is what the event hub adds, correct? Exactly. So we can see the partition ID, when it was processed, and when it was in queue. Oh, wow. So when did it hit the queue, and then when did event hub finally process it? Sure. So putting it in order. So we've got those two pieces of data. Um, and if you, you know, they're, they tend to be quite near one another generally. All right. Now we, we can, we've seen that. Let's minimize this again. And we've got our data stream. Let's go look at a query. Let's build out a query. So this is very SQL-like here. Awesome point. It's very close to SQL. Now there are some advanced things you can do in T-SQL you can't do here, but it's very, very SQL-like. Great. So if you already know SQL for a little bit, you can jump right in. Absolutely. And in fact, the cost of this, this blows me away. Yeah. There's two, um, two things we can do, two ways we can do this. We can use Storm, which sits on top of Hadoop. That requires sure. a, a, probably an infrastructure of 4 to 40 VMs that are running. Uh -huh. um, and they happen to be high memory VMs because Storm runs in memory. Right. And then it can handle this type of processing as well. Very cool. But you're building jobs for it. Right. Um, I, no ding on Storm, right? If you have really complex coded things, let's go ahead and use Storm. Oh, yeah. But now you're paying hundreds to thousands of dollars a month as mm -hmm. opposed to a few cents a month. You know, we're talking we're talking a couple dollars a month to keep this running. Right. Radical difference in cost. Well, many times you, you don't need that complexity. Exactly. So I'm going to get rid of this into statement because that's selecting it into our um, output, which hasn't yet existed. Right. And we're going to grab this data from stand in. Now, we're not actually going to do it yet because we're going to use this test button. Okay. But let's try something. Let's do select star. Well, we've already got select star here. And let's test it. We're going to browse for that file, and we're going to start to do some interesting testing on our data. And what we see here is this summary of all of the things we have. Created at, topic, sentiment score, event process time. Wow. Uh, yeah. So we can do, now let's go back and do things like select created at as time. Sure. Um, we want the topic. You want to break things by topic. Okay. And let's grab the average sentiment score. Fair enough? Sounds good. Okay. Now we can we can take this and we can run it and test it, but it's going to give us an error because we need here, the average is not supported. You need a group by at the bottom. Oh. Now we want to group by. So we're going to group by um, the topic. Group by. Eh, let me, you don't have to capitalize, but you know, it make it consistent. Good to be consistent. Yeah. Sure. So let's group by topic. Now, I want to do one more thing. Azure Stream Analytics is very often used, not like this, to give every single thing. We want to get a window of time and do some context within it. Like, I'm doing an average. Uh -huh. well, I can't do an average of a single item. Right. right. It just doesn't make sense. Right. So now we need this idea of a window. 
interesting windows. Yeah, and there's different types of time windows. Uh -huh. And the time windows go from microseconds to days. Wow. You have up to seven days is the longest you can have. Now, I'm going to group my topic in something called a hopping window. Now, I, again, I'm not going to go into this too much, but we're going to measure by seconds. Sure. And we're going to have a window of five seconds long. Okay, so, so all data is captured within that five-second window. Correct. And then we're going to hop every one second. Now, we could, we could have a tumbling window, which would be five seconds, zero, you know, seconds one, zero through four, uh -huh. and then seconds five through nine, sure. seconds 10 through 14. Right. This is going to be five windows are going to start within that first five seconds. Okay, so, so it incrementally jumps. Right, so we have hops. zero, yeah, yeah. hops. Exactly. Sure. Zero to four, one through five, two through six. And I'm doing that to get data every second, mm -hmm. but have a big enough span of time so that my averages are really just All two items, them. right? Sure. So let's go in and, and do that. And we'll run a quick test of this. Let me save it. And then run a quick test of this. Make sure we have our uh, queries working. Yep, and it's still giving me a grief. Uh, created as invalid in the select list because it's not contained in the aggregate function. Why, why am I having problems with created at? Um, say again? I don't want to put it in there. Let me do a system.timestamp and just take the first thing. That, I don't see why that would give me anything different. Let me run a quick test on that. The system.timestamp just says, hey, get the current time right now that I'm processing. Sure. Which in our case, um, since we're talking milliseconds delta, is not a problem. Here we have our time, topic, and our average. And if we look, our averages are, wow, they're almost all above two. No one's really angry at overall at sure. Mac, Linux, IoT, Big Data, or Windows. We also have unknown, because my parsing algorithm for topics is as good as Twitter search algorithm. <laughs> sure, so, sure. All right, we're good. Let's go back up. Let's save this. We're done with our stream. We're ready to go. Um, we need an output. And we've got to put this somewhere. Right, we so, need an in, we need an out. We now. need an out. So let's go build an output. And we'll add an output, and we've got a lot of options. We can pump things into SQL database. We can pump them into an event hub. We can put them in table storage. I like blob storage for long-term storage. Sure. In fact, I think you should create um, at the raw event hub, if you want the data, you create a query that's just select star from or into blob storage from the event hub. It's perfect. Yeah. Blob storage is cheap. Yep, and stores just everything. We just dump it all. Right? Dump it all, figure it out later. It's that data link, right? Right, you're exactly. dump stuff in. We're going to, for the purposes of this demo, we're going to get some business business value out of this. Sure. I'm air quoting business value, but we're going to go to Power BI. And in Power BI, I'm going to authorize my Power BI user, and I'm going to do that real quickly, just a moment as I sign in. And I'm going to use my work account for this particular thing. And my work account, um, Power BI work, work account is not Microsoft. Account. Okay, so just the organizational account. You have no MSDN. No MSDN. Okay. Right. So what's my output alias? This is this. We had stand in. How about stand out? Stand out. Uh, since we're only going to have one, <laughs> one stand out BI, stand whatever. But stand out's good enough. And let's call this our Twit stream. Twitter or the data set name is Twitter data. Twitter data. Twitter stand data. I don't know if we've had <laughs> Twitter data before. And our table name we'll, we'll call it. Uh, um, Tweet and sentiment. I mean, we're not grabbing the tweet, but whatever. We just need something to yep. appear. It's good enough. And let's say we're done. Now it's going to connect to Power BI. Check that connection out. Wow, that is easy. I, it's so easy. It's, it's ridiculously <laughs> easy. Uh, it's uh, yeah. It's and you can have multiple of these, right? One going to Power BI. Something else going to another event hub, perhaps. Absolutely. In fact, people often do queries for like anomaly detection, simple anomaly detection, and then they pump it back to an event hub because stream analytics might give you that millisecond lag, but back to an event hub and into another stream analytics picking it up going, uh-oh, we have a fire in you know, right. somewhere, fire alarm's off, right? And now we need alerts to go everywhere. 
no problem. You can feed it back in. You have a two millisecond lag. It's okay, you know, from that. <laughs> sure. It's not that big a deal in human times, at least. So let's dismiss this, um, and we've got our output. Let's go back to our query, and let's say select into scan out. Okay. Yeah. Let's save this thing. And now, here comes the fingers crossed part on any live demo. We're going to start this event stream. And we get three options. Okay. Job start time. Mm -hmm. That's now. now. We can say custom time, and we can specify, like, start a little earlier. We've been collecting data for 10 minutes, so let's, let's go back in time 10 minutes. Sure. Notice the default is right now. Let's just drop back to maybe, um, let's get the data in the last uh, three minutes. I don't want to get too much. Yeah, because it crams up the the, the visualization, the, right? The chart, yeah. The chart. So let's just and grab a few. So the third one you were talking about is not available right here. Oh, good point. That th I did mention there's three. Right. Now, once I start this job, um, I'm starting to consume data out of my event hub. Right. And it's keeping track of where I am. Okay. And if I stop it, uh -huh. it'll put a marker there, so I can say go back to the last stream stop time. Okay, so had we run this before, we could have chosen to start right then without losing a beat. Without losing a beat. Millisecond response time, microsecond response time, and we're not losing one of those pieces of data. That's awesome. That is, and that's the third one. And uh, it's starting. Um, fingers crossed still. It's, <laughs> you know, the, it's a demo. But I still think that's very cool how extensible everything is here, right? It's very plug and play. All of the Microsoft um, tools are sort of built to work together with the QuickTime Analytics. Yeah, and in fact, dare we say Unix-like? <laughs> you know, that, that, right. that idea behind Unix was build small functions that do things really, really well and have known outputs. And we pipe the outputs from one to the next, to the next, to the next, doing as complicated a transaction as we need. Um, PowerShell might have been a better example, right? <laughs> PowerShell, sure. The theory behind PowerShell. So those sorts of things, man, it feels like that's what Cortana Analytics is like. It, it's very nice in that way. It's very nice. Hey, it succeeded. Awesome. We're in. All right, I'm going to close this up, and I'm going to. I've already logged in to Power BI. Okay, perfect. So let's open up Power BI, and go over here. And, oh, wow, that was fast. It's already here. We have Twitter stand data. Okay. And it had a little star, an asterisk. It said, you've never used this before. Just created it. Just created it. So let's go in and do something with this data. Um, I'm going to click it, and it brings me to a visualization page. And we can start to say, what do we want to see? Yeah. We can do crazy stuff, right? We can, whatever we want. This, I'm going to do some very simple visualizations. Kind of the classic one is this silly visualization, which is just you know, a chart. And I'm going to drag on time and uh, the average. So you can see here, this is the average over time of sentiment. Uh -huh. Wait, how do we get an average of 10, 15, 20? Yeah, we're going to have to do a little that's, bit of massaging. That's not quite right. So when we drug over the average, we named it average. We did. Probably should have named it something like Twitter, Twitter sentiment. So we need the average, average of, the, of, the average. of the average. Shame on us on naming <laughs> that, right? This is what we get on the other side. Okay. So when we convert it over. Um, and I think that's reasonable. But let's drag in topic. There, there, we had some negative, one negative. Let's drag over this topic. And now we can see a breakdown of all of these things hovering between 2, 4, and some going on down to 0. So that was an unknown one. Uh, this was Windows. Someone was pretty unhappy with Windows, and someone was pretty unhappy with Mac. Oh. So we have some. We have some unsatisfied customers here. Um, there's another Windows one. There's another unknown. Uh, a negative IoT. Interesting. Ooh. In the hype cycle, you don't expect to see the negatives right. as, as often. But so this would add great business value if perhaps you had a product going out. You could sort of see how people are receiving it. Exactly. And you probably want to average over a longer period of time. Right. But then drill in and find that negative tweet, right? Find out so you could respond to it. I, I know that's how I get help from Microsoft, from airlines, everywhere. Sure. Calling up customer service, I can wait on the phone for 40 minutes before I get somebody who's not very helpful. Um, I simply tweet an angry tweet and bang, I get a tweet back and a phone number, and it, often I get helped very quickly. 
and you could set up alerts yeah. or whatever and automate these processes when you get some kind of anomalous data. Absolutely. So let's take a look at here. Let's not do time. Let's just do topic and just drag in the topic and the average here. And let's take a look. Let's do that average and bring it back to average. And so this is kind of the average by topic. Um, you know, big data is 216, Windows is 215. This is over time. Unix 295, very positive, wow. very positive feels on that. So this is over time. Uh, this data is very different from when we showed this before. Oh, sure. We walked through this before. It's, it's very different data. Near real time. Near real time. And we might not like this. We may prefer it in something like a bar chart to look at it like this. We may prefer to put it in a chart that looks like this. Sure. Um, a lot yeah. of different options. A lot of different options. So let's, let's leave it as this. And then what I'd like to do is save this. And I'm going to save it as our uh, Twitter report, or just Twitter. And, and so that's, that's a report that's got some interesting data on it, saved as that report Twitter. Now, from a report, I can actually create dashboards. And I'm going to create like tweets up here. I could call it Twitter the same. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to go down to Twitter, and I'm going to say, I want to watch this. And I pin it to my dashboard. And I might pin this to my dashboard. Uh -huh. Now let's go look at our dashboard, and we can see that this changing over time. Now the one on the right, because it's summarized data, right. won't change very much. Right. There might be some little bit giggles, but now we can watch the data flowing in. Dashboards are always up to the minute, or well, in our case, up to the second. Up to the second. We're right. speeding by second. You can get it up to the millisecond, but there's some lag. Up to the second's the best way to talk. I, I don't think you're going to lose much by going up to the second. Not with this data, no, <laughs> sure. not at all. Well, that's very cool. So we can present this to our business leaders yep. and just show them in near real time decisions uh, that need to be made. Or yeah, potentially. Information. Yeah, potential information. I really think that the way you might want to take this data is stream it into data analytics and take all of the negative tweets, capture the entire tweet. Mm. Um, understand who you may need to respond to, maybe in an automated fashion, maybe not, but then take all of those tweets and send them not just through sentiment analysis, but send them through um, one an analysis of the text that pulls together things like um, topics. Sure. What are they talking about? What do sure. they not like? Um, it might be log on. Maybe your login is awful. You that experience. Let's find out what isn't good and report those topics up. We can do those types of things. Right. Automatic feedback. Automatic feedback. And we don't need anything that we haven't seen here to do it. Wow. I love it. I I, I feel like I, I feel like order now and you know, order now and get two free, right? I, I, I feel like right. we're on some kind of infomercial. But the, the power it, it you get excited about it. Is it is exciting to it be is. able to build that so quickly. And with us just jabbering in between. I know most of our time was jabbering, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, sorry for all the attendees with all the jabber. Let's go back to the slides. Stan, I'm going to hand control back over to you. Okay. Um, and so you can you can take this, and, and we'll go from here. Sure. And uh, where do we go from here? Sure. So what we've seen is we're able to generate analytics that enables action. Right? Many times we don't know what to do. We don't have the right information, and we kind of go on gut. This allows you to automatically get that information so that you know the right action to take, or, or at least you're pretty well informed. Yeah, I love it. Um, fast and flexible? Um, fast, right? In, in both cases. Fast to build, right? Fast to build. Um, we've re we're replacing an entire six-month development effort in two weeks. <laughs> Just by, right. by building this, and the hard part was just the queries. Right. Event Hub, Trivial, all, right. all that, super easy. The hard part is just getting good queries to extract the data the way you want. Right, and it didn't take a large team to do it. No, <laughs> absolutely not. It took a team of 26 months, um, not working full time, they do maintenance as well. Sure. Um, to build out the other proof of concept, which we replaced with this in no time flat. That's right, and, and also there are pre-configured solutions. Um, yeah. Like we mentioned before, the customer churn. Yeah. Recommendations. Very All fast. stuff. Very, Very fast. fast. Uh, secure and scalable uh, it is everyone's fear. You know, I put my data in the cloud. Right. <sighs> but they do regular penetration testing. They do. Which you can see they also comply with uh, HIPAA regulations, 
uh, ISO 270.01. Yeah. Uh, I think o, uh, SOC 1 and 2. Oh, uh, yeah. And some others. So, so the, the, these are regulations from around the world that, sure. are, that are based on, on security and best practices, and they get audited all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I think that I would trust my data in Azure much more than I trust it on my local machine. On right? your local machine? Yeah, sure. absolutely. Um, and again, right, the Dartmouth Hitchcock, uh, which is one of the largest medical centers, at least in New England, yeah. uh, has built a Cortana analytic solution. Absolutely, and it's helping them get good data for their doctors, helping them improve patient care. They've got actual better outcomes. I mean, they can, they can get measurably better outcomes based on At a cheaper cost. Yes, I, and... Well, especially when they don't have lawsuits to contend with, so at a much cheaper cost. That's right. But I'm telling you, I, I want to go to a hospital where there's a machine somewhere behind the scenes saying, don't take these two drugs together based right. on your blood type. Well, the cool thing here is it gets even better. They use biometric data sent to them real time to let them know of any risk factors or anything like that. So you get personalized care, not just sort of, from the average and old static sort of models. It's directly towards your body and what you do. I love it. I, that's the kind of hospital I want to be at. <laughs> yeah. I want a doctor there to make sure, right? I don't want to and inject they do. my drugs. But they, they have, do have a there. team of uh, nurses that monitor it all the time. I love it. There's plenty of other case studies out there. This is, this is a great one. Uh, right. Fun one. Uh, scenarios, uh, you have eye chart, right? You guys can read these. I want to pick out one of my favorite though is cross sell and upsell. Why? Because the, I've been I love machine learning. I did neural networks back in college. It's been a passion of mine. Sure. And I remember the very first time on Amazon years ago. <laughs> this is dating me, but I remember the customers who bought these books also bought, and it was right on. It was amazing. <laughs> Absolutely stunning the recommendations. Sure. And then I took Pandora, which did the same things with That's music right. analysis. Not who watched what, who listened to what, not that, but listening to the actual themes in the music and making recommendations. And right. I actually got an appreciation of country music, which I hadn't had before, because there were some similar crossovers to oh, the music I was listening to. introduced it in a manner you were familiar with, yes. so it was palatable. It was palatable. I know. It was crazy. That's but, great. Say, I, I don't know. Well, so that was, that's, I'm picking out that as my, <laughs> my favorite of those. Sam? Well, one thing I appreciate is fraud detection, right? Uh, you're, when your credit card is being used in a strange way, uh, for example, maybe it was used in New England for that hospital, <laughs> right? and you're in Washington State, uh, they can sort of tell this is not a usual spending habit of yours, and it allows for protection for you and for the company. Yes, and in fact, we talked about things baked in. Sure. If you use Azure Active Directory, the premium service has that geo-bounded stuff baked in. You can get some, that is if people log in on two different very, very cool. strong locations. Yeah. Good. You know, I, we can talk to these key verticals. Sure. But I don't want to. Okay. I want to talk against these key verticals. Okay. If you happen to be in them, you're, they're already going. Your competitors are doing analytics. Right. This is mandatory. Yeah. This is table stakes. I want to go outside of this. System. Right. I think the power and the opportunity sits in things outside of these areas. We're not being used yet. Yes, where you can use it as a competitive advantage, where you can really get literally extra income and cash flow based on this. You're not getting catching up to someone. Right, you're no you're longer reactive in, in your field. You're proactive. Absolutely. You're ahead of the pack. You're ahead of the pack. And, and granted, retail, there's mom and pop shops and things like that that they could get ahead of other mom and pop shops. You're going to have a hard time beating Amazon sure. at this game. Sure. Right? You're going to have a really hard time. Or, be, you know, it's just, it's out there. So take a look outside of this. And I, I want to plug one of the things that we plug at Northwest Cadence, which is intelligent applications. Mm. And we've talked about grabbing data from wherever. Sure. But I think the next step in your applications, your iPhone games, your um, business apps, your line of business, whatever it is, 
I think the next step is intelligent apps, where we're taking and building the intelligence into the applications itself. Sure. Not after the fact building a dashboard, but responding immediately in the application in an intelligent fashion. Yeah, can you imagine that perceptual intelligence being right there in your game or movie or something? Absolutely, absolutely. Then that's where I want that. And, and so, yeah, these are great verticals. Let, let's pull it back and think of what we can do in our actual development applications. Right, let's innovate. Let's innovate. We're at that 10 o'clock mark. Um, I, summaries for me are always useless slides because uh, people can read them and they've listened. They're here. What's your favorite part? What, of what we did, what's your favorite part of Cortana Analytics? I, I'm astounded at how fast you can build a solution. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of intimate developer knowledge or data science knowledge to do this. It's really made that the individual can use Fortune 500 uh, tools. I, I can't second that. I can't, I can't follow that, right? <laughs> that, that's the power. Uh, my favorite part of the demo was building something quick. I, I, right. You know, because we got to do that. But what you said, I think, is the most important, which is, uh, we don't have to be data scientists, right, to crank out very valuable insights. That's right. It's all there for you. Let's take some questions. And you know what? Before we take questions, sure. I want to do one quick plug. Uh, at Northwest Cadence, Stan, uh, myself, a couple others on the team, we would absolutely love to help anybody do an implementation around the, the fundamentals of Cortana Analytics before it launches. And after it launches, work with that Cortana, Cortana, Cortana platform Cortana, Cortana, sure. to, to help out. Um, I think it's a wonderful opportunity. And on occasion, not always, but on occasion, if you have a good enough story, Microsoft will step in and help fund it. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, that's okay. right. That's they, right. They wanted some more case studies on these things. And, and it's good for us because I know we sometimes just kind of brainstorm about yeah. the cool things we can do with it. Absolutely. And the things we're building, some of the IoT stuff, fun, fun things. Okay. All right, let's throw it back to, to everyone for questions. And uh, you can go ahead and leave the slide up, and I'll open up the questions on my computer and see if we've got some. And uh, we've got some here. Um, let's see. Oh, wow, we've got a lot of questions. Let me blow this up so I can see it. Wow, it's, a, it's kind of skinny questions in here, but uh, I'm going to scroll on up. Um, someone lost audio, that's a pity. Um, I just tuned in and don't have the link. We will be recording it, yes. Um, do I have a link to the sample project? Um, I don't um, have a link right now, but I will give you the link that I grabbed. Um, I, I don't like to do a lot of extra work if I, if I don't sure. have to. And so I went now we found this as a sample on the Azure site itself. Perfect. So if you type Azure Twitter sentiment, probably it'll get you there. <laughs> and it'll get you to the page that will, and, and you can bingle that, right? Bing or Google that, you'll grab <laughs> sure. that. Um, um, implementation. Oh, that, a question. How do we sign up for that implementation and ask for potential funding? Um, and that, and that's a fantastic question. Shoot me an email after this, or scan an email, or client services, uh, or, or all three of us. Yeah. It's on the slide now. Um, it, there's no guarantee there, right? That's Microsoft making a determination of whether they think your app is cool enough. Um, I, we have actually talked before. The question person answered yeah. that question, and uh, I definitely think their app is fits that bill of something very, very interesting. Um, especially for the analytics piece and the data ingestion. Piece. It's always fun to work with. It is. So go ahead and send an email over. Um, and if you happen to be watching this from a recording, feel free as well. If you think you've got a cool or an interesting app, it doesn't have to be sexy, right? But it has to be interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Sure. I, I, cows aren't necessarily sexy, but that was one of the big funded ones Microsoft did was putting pedometers on cows. So sure. <laughs> no, it's a, it's novel and fun, and, and, and we like to talk about those two. Exactly. It makes it fun to talk about. Thank you very much. Well, I'll take the last questions, if there are any, and uh, some, some appreciations and thanks, and you are all very welcome. Thanks for hanging out. I very much appreciate the, the time that you spent with us. I do too. Yeah. We'll talk with you again soon. Hope you join us in our next.
Silicon Analytics presentation. Machine learning. We'll be talking about machine learning. Machine learning. Excellent. All awesome. my favorites. Great. Thank you, everyone.